a gadvach, a gadyar, speak marks and mateva for each of us and all of us, but Sikhla Yisrael. Um, I once asked Reb Pinya Korf, all of the Shalom, to lead a Fabrengan for us. I was studying in the Rebbe's Yeshiva, to lead a Fabrengan for us on the um, night before Yom Kippur. Reb Pinya said, I don't know if Hasidim make Fabrengans the night before Yom Kippur, I haven't ever saw this, but Reb Pinya was very kind. He said, that's only if I had something to do. But since I have nothing to do anyways, we might as well fabring. That's in a regular year. But this year, because it's Matzei Shabbos, right before Yom Kippur is, is tonight, when we're supposed to have a Malava Malka and share a story, so certainly it's a good time to fabring. So I'm going to share with you two stories. The first story is about the custom of Lekach. Every year, for Yom Kippur, it's customary to ask for sweet cake, to ask for honey cake. And that way, by asking for help from a human being, this, um, if in case it's been decreed upon someone to ask for help from, from a human being, by asking for the honey cake, we thereby um, are acquitted from that need to ask for human being's assistance. So the um, Rebbe himself would distribute honey cake every year, and it was a lot of people. People were from, came from all over the world, and so considering that the next day is 26 hours of fasting, and how difficult it would be for the Rebbe to, to uh, see so many people just the day before Yom Kippur, so the Rebbe uh, began distributing Lekach, not just the day before Yom Kippur, but four days before Yom Kippur. Four days before Yom Kippur, the Rebbe began distributing lekach, the honey cake, to all the local residents of Crown Heights. And then, the next three days, the Rebbe distributed lekach, the honey cake, to the rest of the USA. Then, the next day, to those who were visiting the Rebbe from Europe. And then, the day before Yom Kippur, only those who were visiting from Israel were allowed to come to get the honey cake. So this is a uh, good order for everyone, except for one person. The person's name is Rabdavid Maris, who shared the story himself. He said that uh, his birthday is the day before Yom Kippur. And by the time that he had connected with Lubavitch and the Rebbe, the Rebbe had already stopped um, his custom of individual um, yechidus, a personal meeting. With, um, the Rebbe would meet everyone on their birthday, and privately in his room. And later the Rebbe said that there is an advantage of meeting people as a group, not just as privately as an individual, but there's an advantage of meeting with everyone together at the Rebbe's Fabrengen. The Rebbe spoke publicly. He said this was a private meeting for each one person individually, and yet it had the value of everyone meeting together, the value of a minion, the value of divine presence, the rest upon a minion, so it's also considered like a private meeting, and it's, in fact it's greater than a private meeting because of the value of the Divine Presence that rests there. But uh, this, Rabbi David Maris, he wasn't really happy with that, but he was happy with the fact that he can come to the Rebbe before Yom Kippur and get the honey cake. It was like a, a mo- he had a moment with the Rebbe. It wasn't like the original um, private meetings that the Rebbe had for people in his room, but it was similar. He would have a, you go by the Rebbe, you get the honey cake, and he would have a moment with the Rebbe on his birthday. His birthday is the 9th of Tishrei, day before Yom Kippur, tonight. So we have that moment with the Rebbe. Well, and then when they changed the order and they started making the arrangements for everyone to come, um, those who lived in Karnites, David Ramaris lives in Karnites, because they asked him to li- come four days early, he would no longer have that, that moment with the Rebbe on his birthday. But he decided that even though he can't have this moment with the Rebbe, he still should, um, he still should hang around 770, hang around the Rebbe's office, just to be in a holy environment. It's a special day, the day before Yom Kippur, it's his birthday. He should still be there. And he's there outside, and he sees a friend of his, oh, Rebbe David, happy birthday. Happy birthday, thank you. Rebbe David, you're going to get your presents. Have you gotten your present yet? present from the Rebbe. You always get a honey cake from the Rebbe on your birthday. He says, yeah, but I didn't do it this year because they asked all the residents of Crown Heights to visit 
the Rebbe four days earlier, so that's when I got, I already got my honey cake from the Rebbe before. So his friends said, no, 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 no. That's for everybody else who lives in Crown Heights, but not for you. Your birthday is today. You're unique. You should visit the Rebbe today. And he says, no, I already went there. He got the honey cake. I'm not going to bother the Rebbe again. He says, listen, there's so many people coming to the Rebbe. One more person doesn't matter. And you are supposed to go in this line again because it's your birthday. It's a private audience with the Rebbe. It's special. It's unique. You are not doing the right thing. You have to go again. It went back and forth. And eventually his friend convinced him to do what he considered a double sin. A double sin because he was going to get a second piece of honey cake from the Rebbe. And a double sin because he wasn't going on the day that he was supposed to go. He was supposed to go um, four days before. Now he's a resident of Crown Heights. He's going with all the Israelis. Double mistake. But that's what he decided to do. He stands online. And you have to understand the, the setting. Each person comes by the Rebbe for less than a second. Rebbe hands each person a honey, piece of honey cake and says, L'shon musuk. As long as that takes, and I, I, about a second. So he's online, and when it comes to his turn, the Rebbe motions like this, like, why are you here? You have to understand, it's not just that thousands of people went by the Rebbe in those three days. There wasn't physically enough time for the Rebbe to to notice him and to respond, he just appeared, the, the one person, went, now it's his turn, then there's thousands of people filing by, and it doesn't, it doesn't feel like, like it's a private moment with the Rebbe, just like everyone's filing by, I was handing each person honey cake and giving them, them a blessing, and here the Rebbe looks at him like, why are you here? And he, of course, felt aghast. On the other hand, he felt like, okay, you noticed. If you noticed, then you probably also noticed why I came. And he looked at the Rebbe and he said, but today is my birthday. And the Rebbe took out another piece of honey cake, rummaged through the box for a few seconds, which felt to him like an eternity. The Rebbe said, you should have a year of success. So it's like a really remarkable story if you think about it, because everyone thinks, you know, you go by the Rebbe and you get it and you get a blessing. It's not like your blessing. It's everyone getting a blessing. But really it's not. Really there's a unique blessing given to each person. And uh, it's real, and it's happening. Um, I'll share one more story. Uh, Rabbi um, Levi Bukit um, shared the following story that he was a witness to. In addition to the Rebbe giving out uh, honey cake on the, um, the uh, day before Yom Kippur, and the three days before, they were also gave out honey cake on Hashanah Rabbah. The last day of Sukkot, before some Torah, the Rebbe gives out, gives out honey cake then as well. So Rabbi Levi Bukit, who's today the Rebbe's emissary in Chicago, um, he had come to visit the Rebbe for the holiday of Sum Torah, and he, um, he comes to the Rebbe, and in the line with him, there is this hippie, and he's dressed like a hippie, and he looks like a hippie, and it wasn't really hippie time, it was in the early 80s, but uh, this was what this guy was doing. And so Rabbi Levi book it's in line. The hippie is in front of him. The hippie comes in, comes in front of the Rebbe. And the Rebbe says to him, where are you going to be tonight for Hakafas? Where are you going to be tonight for the dancing? So the guy says, I wasn't really planning to do Hakafas anywhere. So tonight or any other night? So the Rebbe said to him, it will be my great honor and privilege if you would attend Hakafas tonight with me in our synagogue, in our shul. So this guy thanked Rabbi, thanked, thanked the Rebbe, and he said, I'll think about it, I'll think about it. He moves on, the Rebbe gives the honey cake to Rabbi Bukit, and behind him in the line, there was a visiting Rosh Hashiva from Williamsburg, a Satmar Chassid. And the Rebbe turns to the Satmar Chassid, and begins a conversation with him. The Rebbe says to him, um, you probably, I see, the Rebbe says that you're wondering why I am begging this person to come to Akafas tonight. What connection do I have with him? But the answer is clearly articulated in the Tehillah Lamesha. Tehillah Lamesha 
is a commentary in the Book of Tehillim that was authored by Rav Moshe Teilobam, who was known as the Yismach Moshe, who was a Satmar Rebbe. He lived in the early 1800s, and all of his descendants became the leaders, the Chassidic Rebbe's of Satmar and Seagate. And so he said to him, you surely know what I'm, hint- what I'm alluding to. Do you know what I'm alluding to? So he said, I don't. The Rebbe said, but the Tila Moshe was authored by one of your Rebbe's. So the Chassid mystified, he has no idea what the Rebbe's talking about. And then the Rebbe said the following teaching at great length. He said like this, Yisach Moshe relates a wondrous story about Reb Yitzchak of Dravich. Reb Yitzchak of Dravich was in Gan Eden, in heaven. And there in heaven, he met Rashi. Rashi, the commentator on the, on the, uh, on the Torah, he's known as the father of all commenta- commentators. He meets Rashi in Gan Eden, he meets Rashi in heaven. And Rashi says to him, they say a lot of things about your son, um, your son Reb Michal, Reb Michal, your son Reb Michal of Zlotchev, is, they say a lot of things about him in heaven. What, tell me what your son has done on earth to deserve this, these accolades he receives in heaven. So he says, well, my son studies Torah for its own sake. He says, studies Torah altruistically, just to connect to Hashem. He says, Rashi says, there are many people that do that. Aren't there many people that do that as well? He says, well, my son gives out lots and lots of money to charity, money that doesn't even have. Rashi says, yes, but aren't there other people that do that as well? He says, my son has inspired many people to become Baal Teshuva, to return to Hashem. Ah, Rashi says, now I understand. Now I understand. Because Rash, because your son inspires people to return to Hashem, that's what's causing this great tumult in heaven and why he is given this unique distinction. So that's what the Rebbe shared with this Rosh Hashiva from Williamsburg. And the Rosh Hashiva says to the Rebbe, Ich hab gut verstanden. I have understood very well why, why the Rebbe wanted this man now to come to the, Reb, to the Rebbe's Hakafas to, to dance in the Torah with the Rebbe in the Shul. I get it. So Rebbe wishes him a good yantiv. Interesting postscript to the story. That man, uh, Rabbi Bukit, who was standing behind the hippie and in front of the Shashiva, he said that night he came to the Rebbe Shul and there was dancing and dancing and uh, dancing for Hakafas and Hakafas is always over and people are still dancing. And... Uh, who is dancing until the wee hours of the morning? Who does he notice over there? That hippie. Sure enough, he couldn't turn down the Rebbe's invite to, uh, to our caucus. So connecting um, one more story. I already shared one story about uh, Simchas Torah and it's Yom Kippur. So I'll, I want to share one more story about Yom Kippur and Simchas Torah. I don't know the... Um, Origin of this story, it's a, it's a story which is oft repeated and, and by many, many people, many different sources. I'm not sure the original source of the story. This is how it goes. Rabbi Shmulek is, um, is in the synagogue and it's the night of Yom Kippur and they open up the ark. His Rebbe is honored with opening the ark and everyone's about to recite the special prayer of Kol Nidre. But everyone except for Shmulek. Shmulek screams out the customary prayer that we say on the night of Simchas Torah. Atari Saladas. And I was looking at this guy, what is this guy doing? It's not Yom Kippur, it's not Simchas Torah. It's supposed to say Kol Nidre, you're not supposed to say Atari it's a wrong. it's a wrong holiday. And they wanted to throw him out. Like, what's this guy doing? He's drunk in the synagogue, what's going on? And the Rebbe... I said, leave him alone. For him, it's already Simchas Torah. He has already reached Simchas Torah already now. Said, what? What does that mean? So what happened was like this. There was another man who was incarcerated because he could not pay the parets, the landowner of that region, the, his rent. And the parets had arrested him because he couldn't pay his rent. And he said, I'm only going to release him if 
someone pays me his, the 300 rubles that he owes me. So Shmulek is very concerned about this, and Shmulek goes around the town trying to collect money for this poor guy. And it's right before him, Kippur, and he, he has mail, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twenty 10, 20 rubles, but that's about it, not 300 rubles. And he passes by a tavern, and there are these Jews drinking the night of Yom Kippur by the tavern. Someone said the story, it's the story of Levi Zbedishev, could be. So you see these Jews drinking by the tavern, and he's thinking like, these guys are not, are, are, are not going to be the ones, but maybe he stops by and says, guys, listen, you've got to help me. There's this guy who's incarcerated, the pirate says he needs 300 rubles, and I have to give it to him today, or else. I'm only this day to give it to him. Or else, who knows what he's going to do to this guy? He's going to kill him. We have to give, get the money together. These guys are like, let's see if you could really do what we do, and then we'll consider giving you what you're asking for. What do you mean what you're doing what you do? They pour him a glass of vodka, and say, you, glad, you drink this glass of vodka? One guy says, I'll give you 100 rubles. Now, Shmuel never drank any vodka, maybe on Purim, maybe on some Chastorah, a little bit. Never had a whole glass of vodka. It's, it's, this guy says, life is at, is at stake. And so he uh, takes a glass of vodka, and these guys are laughing at him, they're teasing him. <laughs> it's impossible. This poor little Jew, how could he drink a whole cup of vodka, this big cup of vodka, like them? He drinks a whole cup of vodka, and the, the first guy gives him 100 rubles. The second guy's like, wow, that was pretty cool. I'll give you 100 rubles, do that again. I do it again. <laughs> he drank a second cup of, a second cup of vodka, and he gets another 100 rubles. The third guy's like, I'll give you 100 rubles, do that again. A third full cup of vodka, he drinks the whole cup of vodka, and the third guy, third guy gives him another 100 rubles. He is now in a different uh, planet. He takes the 300 ruble and he somehow makes his way to the parrots. He gives the money to the parrots, and his friend is freed from prison, Rosh Hashem, and then he goes to the synagogue to, uh, to prepare for the holy day. But when he gets to the synagogue, he just falls asleep immediately. And then when the Torah scrolls are taken out, he wakes up. And if, what's going on? The Torah scrolls are being taken out. Oh, it's Simchas Torah. I'm drunk. It's Simcha, it must be Simchas Torah. What else could it be? Ah, there is. That's when he screamed out to Olei Sadas. So the Levi Tzbeditra said he already reached, he already reached Simchas Torah. He already reached the level of Simchas Torah. Similar way, remember one year, it was the day before Yom Kippur, and I was in Worcester, Massachusetts, and I was listening to the Rebbe give the blessing. I didn't speak any Yiddish then. And I didn't understand the one word the Rebbe was saying. But we listened, just, you know, it's a soul thing. Listen to the Rebbe speak. And the Rebbe finishes a long, long blessing. And as Rebbe often mentioned, at the time of, before, of Yom Kippur is a time of the higher level of tshuva. A, a, a time of tshuva that is not about regret and, and pain, but it's about joy and connection and happiness. And the Rebbe concluded the talk with ay 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 hey with a, with a song we sing on Simchas Torah, and for me, growing up in Worcester, I never I never heard of such a thing. Yom Kippur, we ay 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 the song of Simchas Torah, and it really gave me a di- different insight to what this holiday is all about. It's about celebrating our connection to Hashem. It's at the higher level of tshuva. It's about Hashem returning to us, and us returning to Hashem with great joy, with a great fabrengen, as everyone said. We should fabreng every day of the 10 days of tshuva. And then Yom Kippur is a great fabreng between Hashem and the Jewish people. We should see the great fabreng happen in Yerushalayim, the coming Mashiach tonight. L'chaim, 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 l'